Hey everyone, this is Ahmed from Charles Papa Engineering and in this video we're going to be doing some 2D sketches on KTR V5. Uh, so again, this is another video from the series of 2D sketches and this is going to be purely the 2D sketches we won't have any padding or it won't have any like 3D models uh, in this series currently. Uh, so we're going to move to 3D modeling after we're done with this series. Uh, which is hopefully after five to six more videos. Uh, so before we move on with the video, make sure to like like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you can keep updated on the videos as I post them and turn on post notifications so that you know when I upload the next video. So without any further ado, we have opened our software Kadia V5 and today we're going to be sketching this hook. Like always, I'm gonna select a 3D plane. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna select a 2D plane in which I'm gonna be sketching. So in this case, we're, we're selecting YZ plane, and I'm gonna hit sketch here. So a couple, of, a couple of things that we have to notice here. Um, so the first thing is this circle here. The these two circles that we're gonna be making first, and then we have these two circles here that we can make use of. So it's not a circle, but it's like a um, arc. So there, these are the, the these are two arcs that we can uh, uh, extract from a circle, and uh, so like basically we have to draw like four circles before we uh, move on to do more detailed sketching. And one more thing is that we have an axis line here, and this axis line and this axis line, which are gonna serve as construction lines for our uh, sketching. So yeah, let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make these two circles. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're going to make the axis first. So I'm going to select the axis, and I'm going to draw it right here. So this is going to serve, serve as the central axis, um, this one. And if you notice here, this central axis is the center of these two circles and center of um, this, arc, this arc as well. And this axis is the center of this arc. So we have to keep in mind uh, uh, in this video. So we're gonna make the top circles here. Uh, if you have noticed, if you have watched one of my uh, first videos, uh, I told you that um, my software can, does not make the fully constrained element green. So I don't know what's wrong with this. So even if it's fully constrained, it won't turn green. Uh, this is gonna stay um, white. So yeah, but it doesn't mean that it's not constrained, it is fully constrained. So the radi diameter of this circle is 90 units. Oops, that's quite big. I'll zoom out a bit. And we have one more circle here. And the diameter of this one is 45 units. The units can be anything. It can be centimeter, inches, meters, whatever. Um, yeah, and then we can make both of these circles concentric. There you go. Which means that they they're gonna have a common central uh, common center on this axis. And then we are gonna have this length here. So th from the center of this arc to the center of these circles, it's gonna be 178 units. So there you go. 178. Yep, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Now, so next thing we have is this arc, uh, and we're gonna get this arc from a complete circle. You can use other commands as well, like these arcs, but I find it comfortable using circles. So I'm gonna use a circle here, and the 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 radius of the circle is. 45 unit. There you go. And that's going to be radius. 45. That's better. And okay, so and then we have this arc, and the center of this arc is this uh, radius, which which is 22 units offset to the right from this central axis. So we're going to make that as well. Uh, I'm going to make this the axis here and the distance between these two is 22 22 done 
and I'm gonna make okay so I'm gonna make this and this coincident so that this circle lies on the axis and I'm gonna make these two coincident as well okay it's already coincident okay um so now we're gonna make this circle here and the radius of the circle is 90 and they lie on the same axis say on the same line here so I'm gonna make a another axis a horizontal axis I'm gonna make this and this coincident coincident and the center of the circle as well this is going to be nice well. so now this is fully constrained if you try to move it it won't move which means that it's constrained fully now what we are going to do here is so if you notice here these two are joined uh, with the tangential line here and this circle here so, there, so we there's an arc here which is tangent to the circle and then from that arc we have a tangent line which goes straight and joins tangentially this arc. So I'm going to make this circle first and then a tangential arc. And if you notice here, this is not fully constrained. How we're going to constrain the circle is uh, the center of the circle, the distance between the vertical distance between the circle, uh, between the center of the circle and center of the circle is going to be 30, which is not mentioned here, but we are going to use that uh, dimension to fully constrain it. So we're going to make a circle here. And I'm gonna make these two tangential. Oops, sorry. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make these two tangential. There you go. So if you see these two green lines, it means that it is tangent. Um, yeah. Okay. And the radius of this is 32. There you go. And the vertical distance between these two is gonna be 30 or let's say 40 oops sorry this and this has to be coincident there you go so now this is fully constrained if I try to move it it won't move okay so now this arc and this arc are joined by a tangential line and so we're gonna use this um, by tangent line which creates a line between two tangents so I'm gonna so in this for this uh, to work we have to select two circles between which the line are gonna be drawn the tangential line are gonna be drawn so the first circle and the second one so now we have it um, Wait, I think this has to be 30. 5 probably. No, 30. I'm just using it on top of my head because we, we're not uh, given the dimension for this one. So, yeah, that looks okay. But mostly in engineering drawings, you will be given every dimension, so it's going to be fully constrained. So, okay. So the next thing is this tangent line. This is very easy because we're gonna just gonna join this arc with the circle with the bitangent line. So I'm gonna select this again. I'm gonna select the, these two circles, and now we have it. We have a bitangent line here. So the next thing. So this looks. Um, this doesn't look anything like it. So what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do is we're gonna trim some elements from this, give it like its original look. So I'm gonna go here, use the quick trim. And I'm gonna select it again. I'm gonna double click it so that it stays on. Uh, so I'm gonna trim this, um, this, and this, and this. So basically everything that is not required here. So now you see here is now we got somewhat of an idea of how it looks here. There you go. So what left here is so we only got this uh, tip of the hook, 
which are which we're gonna make by using the circles as well, the circular arcs as well. So what we you notice is that we're gonna use we have three circles here. Um, so the first circle, second circle, and third circle. All so with these two circles having 45 degree radius, 45 units radius, and this one has a radius of eight units. So we're gonna make these circles now. Uh, there you go. And if you notice here, this circle is tangential to this arc. So this arc is tangential to this arc. So we're gonna be making use of that property as well. Um, so whenever you need a, a smooth transition between two arcs, it means that uh, it is tangential. So yeah, so if you see these two green lines here, it means that it is tangential. I'll just zoom it a bit. So yep, yeah. and we got one more circle here. There you go. So these two are tangential to each other. And the radius of these two circles was 45. And this one is so. And then we have a circle of uh, an arc, a circular arc of radius 8 over here, uh, which is again going to be um, tangential to these two arcs. So, tangential property, and then we have a tangential property here as well. Let's see. Okay, so now we have. So, what we are going to do here is we're just going to. Um, oh, wait. I'll just um, dimension it first. It's just going to put everything into place. So eight. Yeah. So now we have everything here in place. Let's see if it's dimension. Nope, it's not. So if you notice here, the centers of these two circular arcs are on this um, on on the uh, on this horizontal axis. So we're gonna um, constrain them. With the coincidence constrained, and this one as well. So that they are fully constrained here yep so if you try to move them they are not going to move so what else is left mm, nothing yeah um so i'm just going to trim the rest of the parts by using the quick trim mm, there you go and there we have the hook Quite easy. I'm gonna do it like this. So yeah, it's quite easy. You just I just uh, just made use of the uh, circular properties basically, and we just use a couple of um, axes to serve a property of um, a deconstruction lines, and the rest is just you saw the video. So yeah, keep uh, practicing more of these. Uh, watch the video again. It's like in, in any place in the video, uh, but. Um, keep watching the video again and again and keep practicing it because uh, uh, if you have to be good in Kedia or CAD in general you have to keep practicing the drawings just theory won't work and if you're still stuck if you, if you have any questions or you know if you have any concerns with the Kedia or any CAD software just give me a give, drop a comment in the comment section below or drop uh, give me a DM uh, um, uh, on my Instagram mm -hmm. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like the video and uh, give me a comment on what you think. That's all for this video and I'll catch you in the next one.